All right, here we go. Welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles. Now we're live right here on Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and as always, no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. Already 100 people watching live. Thanks to everybody for turning on that notification, hitting that bell icon. Therefore, whenever we push out a show, whenever we do go live, you will be notified, and it gives you an opportunity to stay in the know with all things Eagles all the time. I'm Chase Senior, producer Smitty on the ones and twos, and we have the Bird Gang rocking and rolling with us from all across the globe. As for what we're getting into on the show, it's going to be a little bit of a free agency preview for the Birds. We're going to look at the top free agent targets. I put together a perfect free agency plan for the Eagles. We're also going to open up the floor, take your questions for a mailbag, get those questions in early by either using the hashtag Eagles or sending in a super chat if you further want to support the show. Some breaking news right before we threw on the headset, turned on the cameras, and put on the lights here in the studio. The Philadelphia Eagles have released cornerback Avante Maddox. This is somewhat of a surprising move, not that he's getting cut, but that it happened right now. Because by making this move, the Eagles are only saving about $2 million in cap space going into free agency. There is a possibility that maybe Avante Maddox could come back at a lower price. That I would not disagree with. So there's some rumblings there that a reunion could already happen. And I know naturally a lot of Eagles fans are saying, well, they're releasing Avante Maddox because Isaiah Rogers is waiting in the wings. And... The Eagles picked him up after he was let go by the Indianapolis Colts. He missed all of 2023 because of that gambling suspension. That sounds good in theory, right? But Isaiah Rogers, who's a very talented cornerback, only has 14 snaps at nickel throughout his entire career. So actually another ideal free agent target is a player who we talked a little bit about here on the show. It's his former teammate in Kenny Moore. Maddox has been a very solid player for the Eagles, a 2018 fourth round pick, but he's been injured a lot over the last couple of years, and that's why right now he's not in the Eagles' plans as of right now, but we'll see if they bring him back at that lower price tag. Lion Fighter sending in a $10 super chat to get us started. We'll pop that up here on the screen in just a moment. I'm actually also... Going to take a look at our poll question here. It was, would you be down for a C.J. Gardner-Johnson reunion? 87% saying yes, 13% saying no. Now I'm going to start a new poll. Do you agree with the decision to release Avante Maddox? And we'll pop that poll question up right now as we do that on the fly, and then we'll continue to give you the best Eagles coverage right here on YouTube. As all of you come in here, please make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and you like the video. Here's that super chat from our boy, the real one, LFX. I met Maddox about a month ago. I'm not a big guy, under average, and I was way bigger than him. I know he's a cornerback, but he was too tiny in my opinion. LOL, 100 emoji, and the heart emoji. LFX always showing love. And that's a big reason why... When he was coming out of pit, like he was never really looked at as a perimeter corner. He was always looked at as a slot corner. He's only 5'9", so he's a little bit shorter there. And in making this move, the Eagles are cutting him pre-June 1. I believe, and this is according to Over the Cap, they're taking on a dead cap charge of about $7.7 .7 million, and they're saving about $2 million. So that's about a $5 million difference here. This could be an opportunity for Philadelphia to get out underneath from that salary in the future as well. So that's the breaking news just coming down on the Avante Maddox front is that the Philadelphia Eagles have released him going into free agency. Let's do a little mailbag call there, Smitty. Get those questions in using the hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat if you want to be a part of our live mailbag. It's been a little while because last week I was in Indianapolis for the NFL Scouting Combine since we did go live. So we certainly want to chop it up. LFX with that $10 super chat right there. I see another real one, Millie 315 in the chat. Dragons here, SMD Eagles, and Francis all hanging out. Cool Rain's watching from Australia. Cool Rain's making a good point. Did anybody else see what the Buffalo Bills were doing today? 
The Buffalo Bills, and we were joking about this in the office before we went live, basically released their whole roster. <laughs> and obviously that's a joke, but they have let go of several starters in the lead up to free agency. And this isn't really to build up their roster. This is all to just get under the cap because right now they're kind of in financial hell right now. So very interesting stuff going on across the NFL yesterday, franchise tag deadline day. Today, a lot of transactions happening across the NFL with free agency set to get underway on Monday. We can show you our Super Chat menu because we always like to have fun and keep it a buck here on the program. All Super Chats will get a shout out. Every $10 Super Chat that comes in in February and March goes toward you having an opportunity to win an Eagles jersey. So basically, every $10 Super Chat is a raffle ticket for you to win an Eagles jersey. We're going to put all of those together from February and March. For instance, LFX just sent in a $10 Super Chat. That's a ticket for him to win an Eagles jersey, and we'll announce that winner at the end of this month. $20 will get you on our Philadelphia Eagles helmet here. We went live two weeks ago. It was an awesome show, and we had a bunch of people who got a gold sticker to go on the Eagles helmet, so you'll get on there for $20. Whoever sends in the most $50 Super Chats in February and March becomes our Eagles Now MVP. We'll send you a customized football. And every $100 that we get on the show today, I'm down to shotgun a beer. So you send in a $100 Super Chat right now, I'm shotgunning a beer. Loaded show on the slate for all of you here today. We are going to begin with some of the top Eagles free agent targets. And of course, we'll continue to talk about the news. Avante Maddox getting released by the Birds. We're going to get into my perfect free agency plan, and then we'll round out with the mailbag as well. If you want entertaining, insightful, informative Eagles coverage, this is the spot for you. A little bit earlier today, already put up a show talking about the Eagles' reported interest in Saquon Barkley as well as Xavier McKinney. Both of those players for the New York Giants did not receive the franchise tag. Obviously, teams always have one franchise tag designation, but nor Saquon Barkley or Xavier McKinney got the franchise tag yesterday. So we talked about the possibility of Philadelphia maybe signing Saquon because they're one of the teams who are reportedly interested in the former Giants running back as well as Xavier McKinney, a very, very quality safety for the Giants as well. And of course, it's pretty fitting that Howie Roseman, who we talked to last week from Indianapolis, his teeth were incredibly white. I'm not sure if he had just gone to the dentist or what, but his teeth and his pearly whites, they were shining, giving the thumbs up there to Xavier McKinney. If you're ready to start the show, please make sure you hit that thumbs up icon like the video. 180 people watching live right now. We're up to almost 200 people watching live. That's what happens when you hit that thumbs up icon like the video. Can we get to 100 likes before we start the show? Because there's plenty to get to on the EAG. L-E-S Eagles front. We're already up to 57 likes, so continue to smash that thumbs up icon and like the video. Segment number one, taking a look at the top Philadelphia Eagles free agent targets. That's what we're about to get into as we are officially about to start our live show. Kelly Knock, a $10 super chat coming in. How about that? That's another raffle ticket for our Eagles jersey, which we'll announce the winner of at the end of March. Kelly, thank you for that $10 donation. We're not worthy. We're not worthy, but we appreciate you. My guy Reed is also in the chat. And how about another super chat coming in from the Don76? That's a $20 super chat. And the Don is going to get a gold sticker right here on our Eagles helmet. And just like that, we're $60 away from me doing a shotgun. And I guarantee you this, if we get to $100 in Super Chats, it will be faster than the Xavier Worthy 40-yard dash, which he clocked in the fastest 40-yard dash in the history of the Combine at 421. So the Don, he said, go Birds! Can't wait to see what the offseason brings. Let's go. I'm just going to put the Don on the sticker here. I mean, that's pretty fitting because that's a legendary name right there. It, 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 pretty legendary. You're hearing from producer Smitty right there. He's a Celtics fan, unfortunately, but he's an OG. 
and he's producing his first Eagles Now Live. So everybody type Smitty in the chat. Welcome him to the show. Happy Smitty to be in here. in the chat. Happy to be here, Bird Gang. What's going on? Let's go. Let's go. You hear the New York accent in him already. What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? All right. We're going to take a look at the top Philadelphia Eagles free agent targets to start with. Of course, for those of you just joining us, we're going to continue to talk about the news. Avante Maddox released. Going to free up about $2 million for Philadelphia going into free agency. Legal tampering period starts on Monday. That's when we're going to start to hear about some of these deals that are trickling through. The Eagles, according to reports, could bring him back at a lower salary. The 2018 fourth round pick, good player when right and healthy. But honestly, sometimes Avante Maddox has these lapses in coverage. And when you combine that with his lack of availability, that's a little bit of an issue. Oh! The Don 76. That's a $60 super chat right there. That's also going to put him in the running to become our Eagles now MVP winner. Huge. We'll announce the winner at the end of March as well because March is going to be a busy month with free agency getting underway on Monday. The Don, I owe you a shotgun. Let's do that after segment number one. I like All that. Right? I like that. The Don, the Don, the Don, the Don, the Don. The Don. My man, I appreciate you. Woo! Thank you for that $60 super chat. It's going to be faster, the shotgun, than the Xavier Worthy 40-yard dash. I promise you. And that's his third ever super chat coming in here. Love to see it, Don. See. All right. Let's capitalize on the audience here. 200 people watching live. 80 likes right now. Let's get to 100 likes. Continue to pepper that thumbs up icon like the video if you're ready to start the show. Brazi Smacks is in the chat. I see Tanner Plummer. He's passed along some really kind words of late. Millie 315, Alex Irvine, Justice Buckner, Reed Barkus, Bald Bear, 76ers now, all a part of the recent commenter club. And 76ers now, I think that's producer Chip over there. I'm taking a look at him right now. Taking personal Through shots the glass at walls me early. Of the studio. He's saying F Smitty because he is a Celtics fan, and we hate the Celtics. Absolutely hate the Celtics. Joshua Smalley saying Smitty as well. You know, in these past, past couple of days working with you, Chase, I have self-rooted for <laughs> my least favorite football team <laughs> and my least favorite city today in Philadelphia. David Marcella, who the F is Smitty? He's the producer on the ones and twos. We're just this week, every producer is working with a host they've never worked with before. So me and Smitty have... Rarely, if ever, really yeah. done any shows before. So now we're doing it just to get to know some other co-workers. Mixing All right. things up. Yes, sir. You ready to go? I am good, sir. I'm ready to go. Is everybody else ready to go? Eight likes away from 100. 200 people hanging out. Carol Hosey, I see you in the chat. How's it going, Chase? Just got here. Go, birds. Real one. Carol, it's good to see you. It's very good to see you. $10 super chat in a raffle to win an Eagles jersey at the end of March. And $20 Super Chat, that's going to get you on this Eagles helmet here. Every 100, I'm doing a shotgun, and I owe a shotgun after segment number one. And speaking of segment number one, going to start off with some free agent targets. And this is going to be a vast list and a wide-ranging list of free agents that the Eagles could potentially target here. Five likes away from 100. Now we're four likes away. From 100. Already $100 in Super Chats. We're going to run through these segments. They're going to be awesome, very informative. You're going to learn about the game of football. You're, of course, going to be entertained as well. You ready to go, Smitty? Yes, sir. All right, the official show about to get underway. This is Philadelphia Eagles now, and the official show starts right now. This is Philadelphia Eagles Now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, thank you so much for making today's show a part of your day. So many other content options out there on YouTube. Anytime you come over and hang out with us, we're always grateful. As for what we're getting into today, free agency starts on Monday with the legal tampering period. So we're going to take a look at the top free agent targets for the Philadelphia Eagles just players that Howie Roseman could sign to bulk up this roster. And this list, let me just say this right from the jump and lay the foundation, it's a vast list 
of a multitude of different types of players from players that are going to cost a lot of money, might be a little bit unrealistic, but you can never rule out because Howie Roseman is always aggressive to positions of need and then cost affordable players as well. Let's start off with some of the big ticket free agents in this 2024 class. And it's funny because a lot of the high priced free agents pretty much all along the defensive line and Chris Jones is certainly in that category. I think over the last couple of years, he has taken down Aaron Donald as the best defensive tackle in the game. And in the last two Super Bowls, he has been a tremendous player. If the Eagles were to sign Chris Jones, obviously, this would be a massive splash. And everything that I've been hearing from being at the NFL Scouting Combine is that the Chiefs are willing to give him about $25 million. But Chris Jones understands and knows that there are other teams lining up to give him at least $30 million because that's about in the range of what Nick Bosa got from the Niners last year, which made him the highest paid non-quarterback in the history of football. And Chris Jones has the argument he's a better, more impactful player than Nick Bosa. And if the Chiefs don't pay him, another team will. Obviously, this would require Philadelphia to free up a lot of money on the cap but he has been able to take over games. Ten and a half sacks this past year, and then you look at what he's done over the last four, consistently available, consistently a game wrecker. He sits out week one for Kansas City because he wanted that restructured deal. He got it, and once again, he was terrific. Fifteen and a half sacks in 2022, and the consistent production is going to allow him, on top of the overall dominant play, to land a huge deal either from Kansas City, and if the Chiefs do not pay him, he's going to get that deal somewhere else. The Miami Dolphins did not use the franchise tag on Christian Wilkins, and he also plays defensive tackle, also a really good player, also a team captain. He's a little bit younger as compared to Chris Jones, and either Jones or Wilkins would signal to me, if the Eagles were to sign them, that Howie Roseman He's a little bit underwhelmed by Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, and Milton Williams, and those three defensive tackles. Now, Jalen Carter was runner-up for Defensive Player of the Year on the defensive side of the ball behind Will Anderson, who was great for the Houston Texans. I think more so the concern would be Jordan Davis. And my concerns for him coming out of Georgia, is he a three-down player? Well, so far, he has not been a three-down player. Christian Wilkins is. And this is a player who I think is starting to come into his own and he's really been able to develop, and that really came to fruition this past year with Miami. Obviously, you have to throw out the Vic Fangio connection because he had a career year and a contract year, nine sacks, 65 tackles, 10 TFLs, when Vic Fangio was his defensive coordinator. There were some rumblings that some of the players in Miami didn't really get along with Fangio. He wanted out. The Eagles basically stole him away. Something to keep in mind there. Then we go to defensive end. Daniel Hunter. And a lot of this is going to come down to what the Eagles' plans are for Hassan Reddick. Are the Eagles going to keep Hassan Reddick? Are they going to try to trade him away? Is his asking price going to be too high? Daniel Hunter is a stud. He's 29 years old, so he's a little bit older. He also has some neck issues. That concerns me a little bit. But this past season for Minnesota, under Brian Flores, who's a terrific defensive coordinator, Daniel Hunter was terrific. Fifth in the NFL in sacks. And you look at what he did in 2023, 16 and a half sacks, four forced fumbles. So he was really just a game changer in that regard. 83 tackles, 23 TFLs. Again, 23 TFLs. Now this is back-to-back -back years in which he's been able to stay healthy. And in the process, he's given Minnesota a combined 27 sacks. That's a really, really productive number right there. The neck issues came in that 2021 season. To Chase Young now, this would be a Vic Fangio type of signing and a Vic Fangio fit for this defensive scheme. He's been a frustrating player throughout his career and a polarizing player throughout his career. He's had injury issues, he's had lack of effort issues, but he's 24 years old and when you look at him, he looks like an absolute physical specimen. He has all of the physical tools to have a double digit sack campaign. But for whatever reason last year for the 49ers, he played in nine games and he only totaled two and a half sacks on a loaded defensive front. And when he played in seven games with the Commanders, his sack production was even better with five. He came under fire in the NFC Championship game for having a lack of effort. So that's an issue here 
But when engaged, given the size that he has, Chase Young is a dominant player at times. And that's why he's so fascinating. And then you have Bryce Huff, who was a UDFA out of Memphis a few years ago. And every year that he's been in the NFL, he's progressed. He's taken steps forward. He's been a late bloomer who's rounding into form. And this is the type of player that might fit what Howie Roseman is looking for. Doesn't break the bank. Analytical darling. Late bloomer. Kind of like Josh Sweat where they paid him in advance expecting future production. And he lived up to that production. Now with Bryce Huff, you look at his numbers. Two sacks, two sacks, three and a half. And then he explodes for ten. And that Robert Sala defense is very defensive lineman, I guess, um, friendly. And Bryce Huff reaped the benefits of that. And he was top 20 among all edge rushers and quarterback pressures. He had 67 last year in addition to 21 quarterback hits and those 10 sacks. Again, I would like this signing because I'm not sure this is a signing where you have to pay him Chris Jones, Christian Wilkins type of money but it's a player who can give you double-digit sacks for the next couple of years under that contract. Before we continue to move forward with our top free agent targets video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Free agency begins on Monday. We're going to discuss every move. And if you want to get ready for the offseason, ready for the spring, ready for the summer, support the birds and support the show, Real John shirts are available. Are you a real one who tunes in all the time? Then you're a Real John. Chatsports.com slash Real John. Obviously, it's a fun shirt. No need to take it too seriously. I rock these all the time when I do my workout, sometimes on the show. We're going to put that link down below in the comment section, as well as in the description of this video. Available in the Kelly Green, available in black. Chatsports.com slash Real John. All right, we're going to continue to move through some of these free agents here, and we'll start to go through some of these players a little bit quicker. We've talked a lot about Patrick Queen. If the Eagles are looking for an off-ball linebacker, he'd be awesome. Calvin Ridley would be a great wide receiver three. Xavier McKinney, really good safety for New York, arguably the top free agent safety on the market. Kenny Moore, after the Eagles released Avante Maddox, becomes a very, very viable and interesting target, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts. And then Xavier Howard, who was let go by Miami and has that familiarity with Vic Fangio's defense. I'd say all of these players in some way, shape, or form are one, good fits, and two, realistic possibilities here. And all of them would obviously give Philadelphia something a little bit different. For Patrick Queen, really good off-ball linebacker who can impact the game in a variety of ways. And you can include him in blitz packages, he can play in multiple different schemes. He's really good against the pass, and that's obviously really important. For Calvin Ridley, and going back to Queen, Eagles just got gashed in the middle area of the field. To Calvin Ridley, he had a 1,000-yard season coming off that gambling suspension last year under Doug Peterson when Trevor Lawrence was throwing him the football. He would be a great wide receiver three who played with Jalen Hurts at Alabama as well as Devontae Smith and a vertical threat who's so much better at tracking the football and running routes as compared to Quez Watkins, and you just really, really upgrade at that wide receiver three spot. Xavier McKinney, one of the top safeties, and we know that the Eagles need help at safety, and right now, only two safeties are currently under contract. Sidney Brown, as well as Reed Blankenship. And then Moore, very good slot corner, who can play the run, not afraid to put his hat on the ball carrier. And then Xavier Howard, his best days are in the rear view. His best days are behind him. He was let go because the price tag was too exorbitant for the Miami Dolphins. But the Fangio familiarity could help you here because he knows how to play corner in that defense. And I think because he's past his prime, he could come at a cheap price for Philadelphia in the free agency period. Moving forward, Cameron Curl, Sean Murphy Bunting, Frankie LeVu, Devin White, Darius Williams. All of these players are intriguing to me too because Cam Curl, cerebral player who's a hard hitter. I think he's a little bit of an analytical darling. That Washington defense was just awful last year, but that's a young player who's coming into his own. Sean Murphy Bunting, K 
can really turn his hips so he can play in zone and man. Frank Levu more on him in a moment. Devin White can wreak havoc from sideline to sideline. He's just a bullet train when he's engaged. But in talking with people at the NFL Scouting Combine, he kind of pouted all last year because he didn't get that contract extension. And then Darius Williams was top five among all cornerbacks in pass breakups last year. He was let go by the Jacksonville Jaguars earlier this week. Frank Levu, let's talk about him. A lot of completion rate of 72.2%. Gave up 378 yards through the air, two touchdowns. He had two pass breakups, no interceptions, a quarterback rating of 103.8. As far as those numbers, they're not great, but I do like the versatility to his game. He's not one of the blitzing linebackers that you're going to use a lot when you signal a blitz. He can drop back in coverage a little bit more than that, but in the last two years, five and a half sacks, and seven sacks. That's not bad production. A couple of forced fumbles during that stretch as well. And in the last two years, he's been a tackling machine. More than 100 in each of the last two years in 2022 as well as in 2023. Other free agent targets that make sense. Geno Stone, I love how the Ravens develop defensive backs. When I was at the Combine, Eric DaCosta, Ravens general manager, said he might be the best seventh round pick we've ever drafted. Drew Tranquil, really good player for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a player that you can just trust. And if you can master Steve Spagnuolo's defense, you can master Vic Fangio's defense. Darnell Mooney is right up there with Calvin Ridley, two of my favorite wide receiver three targets in free agency. Andrew Van Ginkle, one of the highest graded edge rushers, outside linebackers in the NFL this past year, a career season under Vic Fangio with Miami. Julian Blackman, very solid safety with Indianapolis. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, we talked about him earlier this week. According to the buzz coming from the Combine, there's a real possibility him and Philadelphia could reunite. Aziz Alshire was fifth in tackles and fifth in tackles for loss last year for Tennessee, a former Niners linebacker for an organization that's developed the heck out of linebackers. Josie Jewell has worn the green dot, has played under Vic Fangio, if you want to bulk up linebacker but not break the bank there, that move could make sense. How about Odell Beckham Jr. as a wide receiver three? I could see him leaving the Ravens. That's kind of the chatter right now. I still think he has some gas left in the tank. And him alongside A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, I'm intrigued by it. And then Bobby Wagner, older linebacker who's still really, really productive. If you want some older safeties, Jordan Poyer as part of the Buffalo Bills, just cleaning house. Letting go of multiple starters, offensively and defensively, just to get under the cap. They let go of Jordan Poyer, former All-Pro safety on Wednesday. And then another All-Pro safety, Eddie Jackson of the Chicago Bears, was also released in a move that freed up about $14 million for the Bears. Eddie Jackson was a first-team All-Pro under Vic Fangio in 2018. And then lastly, I doubt that the Eagles go shopping for a running back. But this is a loaded running back class if the Eagles want to upgrade there. Now, I think bringing back DeAndre Swift makes a lot of sense. But if you want to make a bigger splash name value-wise with Saquon Barkley, you can certainly do that. Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Austin Eckler, those running backs are all different. Derrick Henry, physical, bell cow back who's not going to catch passes. Saquon, dual threat back who offers you power and finesse. Josh Jacobs led the NFL in rushing yards in 2022. Austin Eckler gives you a little bit of everything, and DeAndre Swift doesn't have the workload of those other backs, still in his mid-20s, coming off a career year, first year for him, in which he surpassed 1,000 rushing yards behind that Eagles offensive line. And the crazy thing is, DeAndre Swift had two games in which he had more than 20 carries as he was criminally underused by Brian Johnson, who I'm happy is out of there. And in talking with people at the Combine, they just realized Brian Johnson wasn't cut out for the job. So with that, those are a bunch of free agent targets for Philadelphia. Name a player that you think the Eagles need to sign. Drop me a name or names down below in the chat, and we appreciate you for watching the show. All right, if you want to get on our live mailbag, use the hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat. More than 300 people watching live right now. If you're new to the show, I'm curious. Just type me if you've never seen us before, here on Eagles Now, we give you coverage every single day, short-form content. 
long-form content, live shows, regular videos, watch parties. We do it all here on Eagles now. Grew up in Westchester, Pennsylvania. It's an absolute dream to be able to talk about this team every single day. Saquon from Reed, Patrick Queen from Alex Irvine, talking about dream free agent targets here. Cool Rain said Slay is trying to recruit Quandre Diggs. He was also let go if you want a veteran safety in the mix there. Reed Barkus also said C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Smitty, you want to get me a happy dad? Because I owe a shotgun. Mitch is going to get it. Coming in from the Don 76, sending in a $60 super chat. I said, every $100 that we get, get a shotgun, a beer, and I guarantee you, it's going to be faster than Xavier Worthy's 40-yard dash. Thank you, Mitch of that 421. So we'll do that and then we have two more segments to get to right after this with segment number 1 in the books. All right, so this one's going to be for the Don. Let's go. And it will be faster than the 421 from Xavier Worthy. I'm going to try to get an unofficial time. At the here. NFL Combine. You can go unofficial time because oh. the unofficial time for Worthy was 4-2-2. Yes. And then the official time was 4-2-1. So let me know when you got that clock ready to go. Stopwatch is ready to All roll. Right. Stopwatch is ready to when go. I, when, that, when, that, when that thing flicks, I'm, I'm pressing the green On the button. crack. On the crack. On the crack. This is for the Don 76. Let's go. Shout out to Don. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh my God, oh my God. That would have sh shattered combine records. Three, seven, and it seven. landed. It landed. Three, seven, one. That thing landed on the ground and you could hear the air and how hollow it was inside. My goodness, that was Three, a performance. Three, seven, one. Oh my God. Let's go. I'm honestly jealous of that. Wow. King Javier calling me Nick Foles. Are you saying because I'm well endowed I'm Nick Foles? Is that why you're calling me Nick Foles? <laughs> Millie 315, phenomenal technique, Chase. I thought it was pretty damn good. Just did a, what was the time on the uh, shotgun? 371. I said it would be faster than Xavier Worthy's 40 yard dash. 371 shotgun is impressive. That's uh, let's get to the news on Avante Maddox in case uh, yep. some people are wondering what's going on. So, obviously, in the title, you see Eagles release Avante Maddox, producer Trizzy Trace, saying hello. <laughs> the move is going to save the Eagles about $2 million. According to reports, the Eagles could bring back Avante Maddox at a lower salary. Keep an eye out for a couple of slot corners in free agency who we just talked about who could be pretty solid options. Kenny Moore is a name that rings a bell. And I know a lot of people are talking about Isaiah Rogers. Isaiah Rogers has played 14 snaps in the nickel slot spot throughout his entire career. So he hasn't really played in the slot all that much. So keep that in mind as we move forward here. Sincere said Howie is going to make a lot of noise in free agency. I did hear from the combine that Howie Roseman, he's low enough to chamber. He's ready to spray some bullets throughout this free agency period. David Marcella said, F. Trizzy. Indeed, F. Trizzy. He's too busy that he can't even host the show or can't uh, produce the show anymore. Billy Bluebills, he finna get sick off one beer. You know what? We're finna keeping it going, and we're going to continue to give you some great content. That's what we're going to do. Let's show him the Super Chat menu one more time if we could. All Super Chats get a shout-out. $10.00. Gets you a raffle ticket to get in the running to win an Eagles jersey at the end of March. $20, you get to sign the Philadelphia Eagles helmet. So we're handing out some stickers here today. $20, yeah, you sign that Eagles helmet. $50, Eagles now MVP, whoever sends in the most $50 Super Chats throughout February and March. We're going to send you a customized Eagles now football. So that's how we're rolling on today's show. All right, let's get to segment number two, my perfect Eagles free agency plan. Segment number one in the books, perfect free agency plan. We talked about Avante Maddox, and then we'll take your questions after that. Use hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat. You ready to go, Smitty? I'm ready to go. Let's get it. 
Coming up on today's Philadelphia Eagles, now with the NFL free agency period set to get underway on Monday, I put together my perfect free agency plan, and we're going to go through all of the moves I believe the Philadelphia Eagles have to make in order to get back to the Super Bowl and a win at this time. First, make sure you give me a follow on X as well as Instagram, at Chase underscore Senior. You can find a bunch of long-form content and short-form content right here on Eagles Now. But if you want to chop it up with me on social media, things are blowing up. On the X and Instagram front, you see the handle. It's the same on both platforms, at Chase underscore Senior. Perfect free agency plan. Let's get to step in here. Step number one, you got to figure out the Hassan Reddick situation. And you have to figure out what the future of Hassan Reddick is for your organization for a couple of different reasons here. Number one, this free agency class features a lot of really good edge rushers who you might be able to get for cheaper as compared to Reddick. And then also, if the, me, if the Eagles move off of Hassan Reddick, they need to have a contingency plan. Are you just expecting that Nolan Smith is going to be able to step right in and he's going to be able to absorb that production that you're clearly going to miss from Hassan Reddick, but you're not going to really miss that much of a beat? It's hard to replace 16 sacks in 2022 and 11 sacks in 2023 for a player who barely played last year as a rookie who's a little bit raw but did show some flashes in that Buccaneers playoff game which was overshadowed by the Eagles getting dominated. If you can't pressure the quarterback in the National Football League, the back end for this team specifically I don't think is good enough to hold up. And that's why it's really important to figure out, are we extending Hassan Reddick, or what is his replacement going to be? Right now, going into the final year of his deal, Reddick is on the hook for $15 million. That's non-guaranteed. That's why he wants that contract extension. And 15 mil per year for a guy who's given you that much sack production the last two years, it's terrific value. Ideally, if you give him a contract extension at 29 years old, you get that up to $17, $18 million. If you start to get to 20, for me, that's a little bit too much, and then you pivot to some of the available free agents. But if you operate and move too late, you might miss out on some of the top-tier players that you could have had if you made a decision a little bit earlier. Number two, got to re-sign Brandon Graham. You've already lost Jason Kelsey, who's an all-time Eagles legend. I think his number is going to get retired. I think he's going to go into the Eagles Hall of Fame. He's a potential first ballot Hall of Fame. And I think there's something to be said for having franchise pillars in your locker room, which the Eagles have had the rare luxury of having with Jason Kelsey, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, and Lane Johnson. But on top of Jason Kelsey retiring, Fletcher Cox might retire as well. And I think it's important to have some of these foundational pieces in your locker room and we didn't get a farewell tour for Jason Kelsey. Can we get a farewell tour for Brandon Graham? Isn't it crazy how he leads every single Eagle in the history of this organization in games played with 195. Jason Kelsey right behind him and Fletcher Cox in third. David Akers tied with him and Brian Dawkins after that. It's pretty wild that Fletch, Kelsey, and Graham all a part of this generation for Eagles fans, are all going to go down as historic Eagles and all were with this team for more than a decade at once. That's very, very rare. And I know Graham is a little bit older, but BG, despite the sack numbers being down, going down from 11 in 2022 to 3 in 2023, keep in mind, sack numbers across the board were down, he had a pretty damn good year. Overall pro football focus grade of 80, a pass rush grade of 78 and a half. He was basically relegated to being a part-time edge rusher. He still had 29 pressures and 23 hurries. He has a spot in this league. He has a spot on this roster. There's some chatter. He's going to come back, and I hope he does come back. Free agency plan, step number three. Please address off-ball linebacker. Unfortunately, from what I found out at the Combine, I don't think the Eagles are going to go after a Patrick Queen or a Devin White. Howie Roseman simply does not invest big-time dollars into linebacker. 
But there are some good linebackers who are going to be available in free agency. Patrick Queen might have too high of a price point. So you might have to X him off. But is Bobby Wagner an option? He's older but still really productive. Frankie Louvu of the Carolina Panthers is an emerging, still young player who has a lot of potential, especially in a scheme like Vic Fangio's. Aziz Al Shire was fifth in tackles and fifth in TFLs last year for Tennessee, can shoot the gap on the run, can also blitz against the pass, and is good in coverage. And that came in his first season as a full-time starter. And then Levante David was a cap casualty for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He can still play and brings you leadership skills as he was a team captain for Tampa Bay. Because Howie doesn't invest all that much money in linebackers, Frankie Levu might make some sense here. Last two years, he's played his best football, five and a half sacks, seven sacks the last two years, more than 100 tackles in each of those last two years. But I'd like Aziz Al Shire a little bit more. For him, you might have to be willing to pay him a little bit more money to outbid other teams for his services, but I love the play last year, and I love what he did developing in that San Francisco 49ers scheme before going to Tennessee. 163 tackles in 2023, nine TFLs, two sacks, and four pass breakups. So this is an opportunity here for Howie Roseman to right his wrongs. And one of the big takeaways from his press conference at the Combine last week, he admitted, I didn't do enough in stacking up the defensive side of the ball with enough players, and that's on me. Well, Howie, you can reverse that by addressing the positions of weakness on this Eagles team this offseason. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because when free agency begins on Monday, we're going to be breaking down every single move that the birds do make. And we give you year-round and daily content right here on Eagles now that you simply do not want to miss. Coming in at number four, just like the Eagles need to sign an off-ball linebacker who can actually cover the middle area of the field, Eagles have to sign a safety. They actually might have to sign multiple safeties. Now, of note, from Indianapolis, from the scouting combine, the Eagles did meet with multiple safeties. And a lot of them are intriguing prospects in the NFL draft. Malik Mustafa, Cam Kitchens, Kalen Bullock. The Eagles met formally with all of those players. Unfortunately, I like Cam Kitchens, but he tested horribly. He ran a 4 6 40 yard dash. So maybe as a third or fourth round pick, you could decide to get him there. But look at this Eagles safety depth chart. There are two safeties under contract for this team going into 2024. It's Reed Blankenship and it's Sidney Brown. And Sidney Brown's coming off an ACL tear. So that's a little bit of an issue for me, and that's why the Eagles simply have to address that position. A lot of chatter that C.J. Gardner-Johnson could come back. You could even go after a player like Jordan Poyer, who was let go by the Buffalo Bills. Let's say one year, $4.5 million. Jordan Poyer was actually with the Eagles way back in the day. Xavier McKinney, really good safety for the Giants. Quandre Diggs was let go on Tuesday by the Seattle Seahawks. He's a quality player. Darius Slay might be trying to recruit him because they played together with the Detroit Lions. And then Eddie Jackson, he was the first team all pro under Vic Fangio in 2018, has that scheme familiarity. And going back to the CD Deuce front at CJ Gardner Johnson, he barely played this past year with Detroit because of a torn pack. Ball skills, instincts, having a knack for making big plays. Lastly, the injection of swagger and confidence is needed for this Eagles defense. They missed it last year. Outside of those five safeties, how about these five safeties and defensive backs, I should say? Alohi Gilman was a pro football-focused darling, had a coverage grade in the high 80s last year for the Rams. You could bring back Kevin Byard on a restructured deal, but him coming back, on that $14 million cap pit, it never made sense. Cam Curl, cerebral player, hard hitter. I think he's coming into his own as a quality guy. That could be an option that's not going to break the bank. Julian Blackman, Darnell Savage, other options there at safety for Philadelphia. And Savage gives you a little bit positional versatility. He could play nickel. He could play deep safety. And then lastly, I'd really like to see the Eagles find a wide receiver three. If you get a good compliment, Next to A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, it just makes this offense more multiple. It makes this offense more dangerous. And we saw in the playoffs when A.J. Brown was out, 
and Devontae Smith was banged up. Julio Jones was your number two. Britton Covey and Quez Watkins were getting significant snaps. It's just not good enough for a Super Bowl contender. And just like some of these other positions offer some quality talent at positions of need, there are some good wide receiver three candidates in the free agency class here. Calvin Ridley had more than 1,000 yards for the Jags this past year. Darnell Mooney's first two years for Chicago, very solid, before Luke Getze became the offensive coordinator and he fell out of favor. Marquise Brown has never lived up to the hype, but went to Oklahoma. Like Jalen Hurts, he's a speed threat. Odell Beckham Jr. out of the slot, you can sign me up, even though it requires some drama and you having to take him to daycare on some days. And then Gabe Davis out of the slot, that's a bigger body out of the slot. He's not a vertical option, but do you use Devontae Smith more so as your vertical option? So as you look at all of those free agent targets for Philadelphia, and you think about the wide receiver plan, and the linebacker plan, the safety plan, and then you look at some of the preeminent players in this class as well, it's great that Howie Roseman has about $42 million as of this recording at his disposal because he's going to be able to improve this roster. Speaking of those positions, what position solely must the Eagles address in free agency? Let me know down in the comments section right now. And as you venture down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Going to round out with the mailbag here. So use the hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat to join the conversation. And Elliot Shore Parks, friend of the show, Solomon Indy, said what's up. He said an estimate of the Eagles salary cap space so far this offseason started at 31 mil. And now, after Jason Kelsey retired, Avante Maddox released, they have about 46 million. Contract restructures can open up even more. Contract extensions can open up some more cap space. So I think some things are going to happen in the lead up to free agency here. Got a lot of good questions and super chats that we can have as part of our mailbag here. And Smitty, I'm ready to get into that as soon as we want. Cool. Yeah, super chats and... Use hashtag Eagles if you want your questions or your comments or your hot takes featured on the show here. If you want to send in a super chat to support the show, we'll never turn that down. And then hashtag Eagles again or Super Chat to get your questions answered here on the show. Dragon tuned in from Serbia. Why are they bringing back Bradbury? It makes no sense because the dead money is pretty steep. But it would not surprise me if Howie Roseman worked something out where they're able to just let him go. And then Isaiah Rogers and Darius Slay are your top two perimeter corners. Cool. Rain's asking about Jerome Baker. I've seen Andrew Nathan ask about Jerome Baker. We'll talk about him. All right. Let's answer your questions here on this Philadelphia Eagles Now mailbag. Let's go. Today's Philadelphia Eagles Now is sponsored by 8sleep. Get $200 off their pod cover at 8sleep.com slash chat sports. And if you use that link, not only do you get $200 off, you get free shipping as well. Stay tuned. More on them coming up here in just a moment. Lion Fighter X getting us started on today's Philadelphia Eagles now mailbag with this one. I met Avante Maddox about a month ago. I'm not a big guy. Under average. And I was way bigger than him. I know he is a cornerback, but he was too tiny in my opinion. So, Obviously, LFX chiming in there after Avante Maddox was released by Philadelphia on Wednesday. This is a move that's going to save the Eagles about $2 million in salary cap space. And after Jason Kelsey retired, Avante Maddox released, Kevin Byard released, Philadelphia has about 
44 to 46 million dollars loosely in salary cap space without any other moves as of this recording going into NFL free agency, which gets underway on Monday. And I think that Howie Roseman is going to get busy with freeing up some more dollars so that the Eagles can improve this roster. Now, I would not rule out Avante Maddox coming back to Philadelphia. In fact, that's some of the early buzz that he could come back at a lower cap number. Now, if you're pumped up for NFL free agency like I am, every single move that the Eagles make, we're going to be discussing it, breaking it down. I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Alex Irvine, does Howie Roseman want an open competition between Eli Ricks and Isaiah Rogers, or is he looking for an outside source? It kind of depends on what happens in free agency and what the cornerback market is. If Legereus Sneed or a Jalen Johnson were available, and now they're not as free agents because they got franchise tagged, I think Howie would have gone all in. He would have figured out James Bradbury and that contract. Maybe he'd be on the roster. Maybe they'd cut him, and they'd just eat that money while opening up some dollars elsewhere. But I think Howie would have gone big game hunting for a corner like Sneed or Jalen Johnson. You can't do that now unless it's a sign-in trade, which could happen if the Chiefs or the Bears were appeased by a deal that you could offer them. Eagles do have the 22nd overall pick and a lot of good draft capital in the first couple of rounds that they could include in a trade. But you think about the other outside corner opposite of Darius Slay, Isaiah Rodgers has only played 14 snaps in the slot and nickel throughout his career. So traditionally, he's been an outside corner. He gives you some special team snaps, too, as a returner. I think that's why the Eagles really liked him. Eli Ricks, I'm a fan of his potential. I think he's got really good length. You can never have enough good corners on a roster. And you think about Keely Ringo being on this team. James Bradbury is literally throughout his entire career. You look at the trajectory of it. Good year, bad year, good year, bad year. Did he have a bad year in 2023? And if you bring him back, he services again in 2024. That's a possibility. But this is also a deep nickel corner class. A player like Mike Sainra still out of Michigan could be an awesome addition in the third or fourth round for Philadelphia. The options really at this point are wide open. Millie 315 next up. Seahawks release Jamal Adams. Chase, do you think he could fit here in Philly with Vic Fangio? Is he washed? In his prime, maybe as a box safety, who is physical, who can set the tone with that physicality, but Millie 315, that trait that the Seahawks made with the Jets goes down as one of the worst in the history of football. Now, Seattle was able to right their wrongs because then the Russell Wilson trade for them became one of the best in the history of the NFL, and for the Broncos, one of the worst in the history of the league. But to give up all of that for Jamal Adams, who, one, got cooked overnight, two, was hardly available, three, just can't really play anymore, I am out on Jamal Adams, I would not do it, even if multiple injuries happen to that safety spot, he's done, he can't cover, he's slow, and at this point, what does he do well? Basically nothing. Cool Reigns, any chance we could get Jerome Baker? He is used to Vic Fangio's system, he's good, and he could be cheap. Jerome Baker is a pretty intriguing player. The measurables are pretty interesting. He was a third-round pick, 73rd overall back in the 2018 draft out of Ohio State. He's still somewhat young. His career production has really been up and down. 2023, one and a half sacks. 2022, four. Year before that, five and a half. Year before that, seven. So his sack numbers in 13 games were down, but he certainly is a player who offers you interesting athleticism and athletic traits at that linebacker spot. And I'd be intrigued of just taking a shot on a guy who went to Ohio State, really good player, came into the league with pedigree, but hasn't necessarily fully tapped into his fullest potential as a player in the National Football League. Who is your dream free agent target? I'm very interested to see which players, fans, really want the Eagles to target. And I want you to let me know down below in the comment section right now 
Just look at the channel history. We've talked about a bunch of free agent targets for the Bears. Before we continue to move forward and take your questions, today's Eagles Now is sponsored by Eat Sleep. $200 off the pod cover by going to eatsleep.com slash chatsports. You also get free shipping as well. Now, the pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. And this cover, easy to use, you can use it from the power of your own phone, and it can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet. What's incredible is the technology. It allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed, as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. I start every day with the cold plunge. I end every day with a sauna. So I love the cold exposure and the heat exposure. And then when I go to sleep, if I'm in the mood to sleep a little bit cooler, I'm able to do that. If I want to sleep a little bit warmer, you can do that. If you're feeling sick, you need to get some sweat out. You can turn that puppy up to 110 degrees and you can do that outside of just sleeping. So the options here are limitless. What's incredible, too, is that the pod also tracks your sleep and your health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. So there's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life better than sleep. Easiest way to do that, I'm telling you, Eat Sleep's Pod 3 cover. Go to eatsleep.com slash chatsports, $200 off and free shipping on the pod cover by Eat Sleep. Invest in the rest that you deserve with the Eat Sleep pod. Red CG. What position does Philadelphia need to focus on when it comes to free agency or the draft? I think linebacker safety are my first two positions of emphasis, and then wide receiver three after that. And then you have to figure out if you want to bring back DeAndre Swift or not. I think he's a really quality player who's still young, coming off a career year, who isn't going to cost a crazy amount of money. But those are some of the top options and some of the top needs? And then how confident are you that Tyler Steen can step in at right guard? If you're not, do you address right guard in the draft? Because at 22, you can get a really, really good player who could be a part of this organization for a decade? Or do you address that position in free agency? With offensive line, these guys can be plug and play right from the jump. So those are some of the positions that I'm looking at, Red CG, of importance. Matt Levinson. If the Eagles can make one huge signing out of these three, who would you want? Christian Wilkins, Patrick Queen, C.J. Gardner, John. That's a great question. I think the position and the player that they don't need among those three is Christian Wilkins because you have Jalen Carter, who I think can be a stud if he keeps his head on right. And obviously, that's a little bit of a concern. You also have Jordan Davis, who... I met him on Super Bowl Radio Row. It's difficult to find a person who's more physically imposing and larger than Jordan Davis, but can he be a three-down player in this league? Up to this point, he hasn't been in good enough shape. So I think you're good at defensive tackle. Frankly, I like Milton Williams a lot as a player too. So I think you're good at defensive tackle. Patrick Queen I think would be awesome. I don't think he's realistic. So that leads me to C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I think he's coming back to Philadelphia. I've been on this for a long time. A part of my perfect free agency plan, which we did, I think, two days after that Buccaneers loss in which the Eagles took one on the chin, I said, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, that's one of my dream free agent targets. I think the Eagles need that swagger back on the defensive side of the football. Cool Reigns, any chance we could get Jerome Baker? Let's talk more about Jerome Baker. You can pop that up there, Producer Smitty. He's good, and he could be cheap. If you're looking for a depth option, a depth option solely, Jerome Baker could be a depth option for the defensive side of the football. And Howie Rosen always likes those types of players where you invest low and then they end up giving you extraordinary value. And we've seen in flashes Jerome Baker have good sack numbers. He's put good play on tape. He just hasn't been consistent enough. Andrew Nathan, I see so many pundits saying we are interested to sign a running back in free agency. But Chase, I know, and you know, we don't do that. I personally think we should draft a running back, Ray Davis, or Jawar Jordan. Your thoughts? This running back class is not good. 
Um, and I'm going to take a look at some of my top running backs in the draft. I love Blake Corum. We talked about him on the show this week. Blake Corum is a dog. Uh, Jonathan Brooks is probably the number one running back in this class. Trey Benson out of Florida State, good. Blake Corum, I loved his 40-yard dash time, and I love him being an overall leader, a guy who has great balance, is a little bit shorter. Bucky Irving out of Oregon, solid. Um, the kid out of Louisville ran extraordinarily fast. Um, it was crazy how fast he ran. And then the Tennessee running back ran really fast, too. The Louisville running back. Bad radio or bad television here. Isaac Garendo. He ran a 4-3-3 40-yard dash. He has a lot of health concerns. And then Jalen Wright ran a 4-3-8 40-yard dash. They're really fast. So what I would do, and I've said this a couple of times, re-sign DeAndre Swift, and then you draft the running back to kind of reset the running back clock a little bit. And then you have Kenneth Gainwell as your RB3. That's a pretty good running back. Alex Irvine... How would we feel about Kool-Aid McKinstry at 22? I know he has the foot injury, but I think he could be the best corner in this draft. He has gone against some studs in college. Him and Terion Arnold as a cornerback duo at Alabama. Think about that. They're two really good players who I like their ability to address the football, turn their hips, and make plays in coverage. The Jones fracture concerns me, and I'm not sure how much you could rely on him to be a day one impact player because the reports are he'll be ready for week one. He's going to run the 40-yard dash at his pro day, so he hasn't even known that he's been dealing with that injury. That's a good sign. But he's going to be ready for week one. That means he might be out for training camp in the preseason. How much could you rely on him? I like the player, though, and obviously that wouldn't be a play for year one. That'd be a play for the long haul. And maybe in that case... You just move forward with Darius Slay, Isaiah Rogers, Eli Ricks, Keely Ringo, and then you draft him as well. The Eagles have not drafted a first-round corner since Lido Shepard. Think about that. It's pretty wild. If you're still rocking with this, give me a real one down below in the chat. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Go Birds! All right, good stuff from everybody. A couple of super chats to catch up on here. Kelly Knock. With the $10 Super Chat. Thank you for that, Kelly. Reed, can't help but support. Go Birds! That's a $5 Super Chat coming in from the OG Brody. And then Project, uh, Project Keep Mob, excuse me. I would love us to get Casey Hayward. The thing with Casey Hayward, he's old, he's been injured, and I think he's washed. So I just don't think that's a realistic option. All right, awesome stuff here today on Philadelphia Eagles now. Another programming reminder, we are going to be going live next week, and we'll be talking about all of the free agency moves that the Eagles make right here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on those notifications. We already pushed out a video a little bit earlier on the Eagles' reported interest in Saquon Barkley, as well as Xavier McKinney, so be sure to check that video out as well. We're going to hop on out of here. Thanks to everybody for sending in a super chat, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, and just being here, hanging out here with us. It really does mean a lot. A dream come true for yours truly to talk Eagles football every single day. For Smitty, I'm Chase. Go Birds! We out. Peace!